up as well for um, a great deal of time, beginning when um, we were able to get a um, scholar residence grant so that Dr. Ronald Robertson could um, make sense out of what was a very extensive collection of artifacts that had been but it really needed some serious scholarship to put it in the right perspective. And as a result of all the wonderful work that uh, Robin did, we were encouraged by um, Mass Humanities from Mauritius to pursue and to first plan the exhibit and then install the exhibit. And it's very exciting to have you here. I really need to um, introduce the exhibit team because uh, this was really definitely a team effort. Um, Dr. Robertson, the exhibit scholar, um, Kathy Scowron, Diane Messenger. I'd love it if you guys would stand up because um, <laughs> And Mark Dooley is my assistant, and I tell him that I could not do anything with him. And I can't begin now to describe what parts of the exhibit he had to do with because he'd still be here at midnight. Um, Claude Mauritius from Mass Humanities, we want to welcome him. Also, locally, um, I wish to thank the Toronto Cultural Council and also well, the treasures for giving us for me to sit up here um, by myself. So I would like Diane and Kathy and Mark and Debbie and Eva and um, Tony, if he's here, to all come up and sit on the bench with our, our guest, uh, the Spasachum Yellow Feather. Please, never okay. come sit on the bench. So oh, we're right. all together here because it's the good work of all of these people that has led to this exhibit. The original idea was Deborah Minsky's, um, my library, although it now that library <coughs> includes many monographs and highly scientific materials, the readings of a 10-year-old Before I begin, I'd like to say um, thank you to your family, because no land stays pristine, and we all know that. And as soon as a shovel goes to the land, you're going to find my people. And I'd just like to say thank you that it's proof that we, we were here. It's proof that we are here, that we still exist on this land. And so thank you. Opening words. Akone kapiyanta witatubo. In Algonquin, that means peace and praise be with you, my brothers and sisters. Because when I look out here, I see exactly what my ancestors saw. I see brothers and sisters. My name is Linda Morales Morso. I am woman chief, Squasacho, of the Chappaquiddick tribe of Massachusetts. I am also a medicine woman, which is a spiritual leader for the people. As woman chief, uh, a lot of times I feel as though I have a job that's near impossible to do. Because not only do I have to quiet the fears of my people, I have to come and introduce myself to people that may not even know that I'm here. And so the first thing I have to do is quiet your mind. They were talking about how long the artifacts, 6,000 years, um, talking about the 1600s. My family can prove its heritage on paper back to the 1500s. I think the last time I heard from my tribal historian, it was 1570 that our family goes back. At least that's as far as we can get on paper. We have a tribal role, which is what was kept on parchment 
And so you see all of the generations who, as my nano would say, the begats. Um, this one married that one, that one married into this family, this one married into that tribe, into this clan. And so it goes back, but it weaves for me. And it shows me a tapestry of my people that I wouldn't otherwise have had. And I will consider the room here to be another layer in the, and uh, another weave in the tapestry for me. Um, it took me seven years to do the genealogy on the tribe. And when my aunt brought the scroll out for the first time and showed it to me and unrolled it on a large dining room table, um, what, I, what took me seven years to complete was down in the right hand corner it was that much. Um, it was a pleasure for me, even though it took me seven years to do this much work. Um, it was a pleasure because I realized I did it right. I'm on there. <laughs> it's, it's what is, it's who we are. And it shows the path that we traveled from here, from my time, all the way back to the inception of Chappaquiddick and beyond that. So let me just say, with, say a prayer for everyone here, because when family gathers, um, that's what my tribe does. That's what all natives do. Manit, great creator of us all, bless everyone gathered here. And as we come together as family, it matters not what we call ourselves. It matters not the tribe, or the heritage, because we are, as you have created us, one people, and under your watchful eyes, under your heavens, and under your stars, please bless all the words we speak here, and protect us, Mother, and help us to become the loving people that you have created us to be. And in your name, great creator, I say aho, and to everyone here I say amen. Now, before I answer the questions, walking in two worlds, I know you've probably heard the term, and what Debbie asked me, what are the Native American people like today? Let me start my talk by saying, I'd like to give an honest representation and a glimpse into the heart of the Chappaquiddick people, and in some small way, all Native people. My nana said the best way to teach is gently and with a story. Hard lessons are easier when they come in a gentle manner. And so today, let's go on a journey. I will examine for you my true feelings as someone that must walk into a world. This is a phrase I'm sure that you've heard, but let me explain it. It means dealing with the native culture and the European culture. You notice I did not say white. I will not use that word. I was raised to say European. And so that's the word I use. So I walk in my world. I walk in the European world. Sometimes simultaneously, which is extremely difficult. And so I usually try to balance myself and center myself as to where I am at that period of time. Try to be in the moment and walk. So some very wise women and men taught me how to live my life. And you know I say women first because we are a matriarchal society. Women make all the decisions. <laughs> they named me chief. They named me medicine. I've been chief for eight years, medicine since I was five. 